I didn't know there were so many fishes hanging out on the ground and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah, if, you, if you look if you look close enough you see hundreds of them like, i see them on the ground on the yeah. tree they're hanging out on the trees like little monkeys this is this is actually like a river this is actually yeah. like a river yeah i thought the fish i thought i was just seeing what what i was seeing was all that was there but there's tons more <laughs> there. there's a, there is quite a quite a few fish in here and i never buy any they're only sell <laughs> there's more and more of them there. all of them keep Populating. Oh yeah, they, they, you know, mm. particularly the, the the leopard frog plecos and the the corridors thereby mm. they they multiply like crazy. I even have a sne sneaky suspicion uh, suspicion that the the rummy nosed tetras they oh definitely th there's young ones because you see there's smaller ones in there. This is going on for like years, and I never see. Uh, you see, you see smaller ones but once in yeah, a while. Yeah, I can see some of them. There's some because the and bigger ones you can tell. So I can only surmise that they uh, breathe in my tank, but I've never seen them actually when they're very, very small. I think they they, they <laughs> stay hiding, hiding yeah. in the in the moss and stuff. Mm -hmm. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go through Jan the Discus Man's fish room, the first half of it, which is his display tank, which is upstairs. That's where he breeds his uh, leopard frog plecos. Now he's going to talk about a lot of different valuable information uh, is pertaining pleco keeping and breeding as well. And you're going to learn a lot of things about in ge general fish keeping as well as pleco keeping and breeding. There, I learned some valuable information, which I am going to be applying moving forward in 2020. And we're going to talk about that in a coming video as well. So if you haven't subscribed, Subscribe down below, hit the notification icon, and stay tuned for part two of this video where Jan the Discus Man is going to show us all of his discus tanks and the tanks where he has like plate sized discus, breeding pairs, his water parameters, temperature, uh, pH, TDS, everything he does, his filtration system, which is extensive, all the water systems that he has in there, everything, and his special food that he feeds his discus that he makes and what goes into that food. Uh, so there's a lot of valuable information coming up. So stay tuned. As always, thank you so much. The last video got a lot of views, a lot of positive response. I love you all for that. If you like this content, please hit the like button down below and comment below and let me know what you learned from this video about pleco keeping as well as general fish keeping and fish breeding. Um, and watch the video till the end because you do not want to miss what this guy has to say. And if you want this, because contact him. I'll put his information down below so you can contact him directly and buy discus or leopard frog plecos if you are in the greater Toronto area. I find it to be a very relaxing hobby and uh, what I find that mo where most people go wrong is they, they buy too small a tank and it's, it's a lot, it's just as much work uh, to have uh, a somewhat bigger tank and it's more stable. Mm -hmm. the things cannot go wrong so fast, you know, so uh, that, that's my advice for somebody. Don't buy a little tank like that. It's a lot of work, and and if you have a bigger tank, you can put something uh, more interesting in it. And Same it's, amount of work. And it's not much more work. And, uh, and it's it's a lot. Uh, the things do not go out of control so fast. You see. It's more balanced. So it's more balanced. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, Aaron, you gotta see this. Hmm. Cool. I keep these uh, seals in front because I don't want to have the algae growing in the. I got a little light here. See. I heard about this tank, like from Josh, but wow. Yeah, yeah I let it go a little bit because, uh, well, I didn't have very much time lately. So. Gorgeous, buddy. And uh, here I have the pre filters. Uh huh. I'm gonna put the... Oh, that's what the pre filter stops the noise. Yeah. But these, and uh, the sump's underneath, I'm guessing? Yeah, there's a sump underneath, I'll show you in a bit. The... The thing is, these... Uh, the, the babies from the... Leopard frogs, yeah, yeah, they kind of climb, you know, and they wiggle their way underneath that filter floss and then go in and they end up in the in yeah. the sump and yeah. then I trap them in this 
So I actually do, don't do anything oh, wow. to, uh, okay. Aaron, to, uh, to breed them. Film that, please. I'll show you this here. Like the, the fish. Right there. Oh my god. I don't know if there's any in my trap. <laughs> you have a trap in there? <laughs> it's a little trap in there. I think, I think I caught them all yesterday. There were six in there. Oh, there's more. Yeah. I'll take those. Oh, yeah, this. I, well, I, 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 I want some smaller ones. My friend wants some, so... Oh, we, see, there's one. See? Nice. I saw the next one, too. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Very nice. He didn't go in the trap, though. It's hard to see sometimes. This is amazing. So I, uh, I always have to trap. Well, I didn't do it for the last two months. I didn't have any trap. There's another one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's funny, you know, sometimes you just can pick them up. But and I got here, I got my uh, CO2, yeah. and this is totally gas type. This is sealed with a rubber seal. Okay. So this whole environment is CO2 rich. And it's sucking up. And, it, and, and it comes out in the tank, mm -hmm. and I have CO2 rich water in the tank and without, all, without the bubbles. And some people put it right before the... Yeah, I, know. Yeah, I didn't even know you had CO2 in here. I, I thought it was just like regular. This is gorgeous. Yeah. 240, right? It's 240 gallons. It's about 100 gallons of the sump. It's not too expensive either sump. I would expect the sump to be a lot more expensive, but it's not. No, you, you don't have to go crazy. All I have is sponges in there. Yeah, no, it's nothing not else. Yeah. yeah. That fish that is now in the, in your movie is totally stunted. This one? Yeah, I put him in there because he he's floating backwards and all sort of he's doing a move. He's cute though. A dance move, I swear. Yeah, he's he's not well. No. I don't know why. He's, I, I can I it try happens. to feed him. It happens though. But when, when you're breeding a lot of fish, I have some angels. I'm just like, uh, I, and I can't kill them. So I'm just like, yeah. I would live your life. Well, for, it, it, I would have actually. Euthanize them, but I can't catch them. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on a different boat. <laughs> but you know what? Okay. To it, catch him, I have to ruin my whole tank. You know, so yeah, no, it's not worth that, it. So. It's, it's not worth it. He's very beautiful. It's a guy. Mm -hmm. mm. Very golden. Oh, that I don't know. It might be a, it might be a female. Oh, you have cores in here too, eh? Yes, they breed all by themselves too. Of course, cores are so easy. Like they, a lot lay, of they lay eggs everywhere. These fishes look like Burberry, the little ones, the tail, like it's a Burberry pattern. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking at it from the screen, it looks that way. This is gorgeous. Your L134s are really nice. Sorry. Yeah, you, you can see there is here and there, I mean, there's caves. Yeah, yeah. Here. This one right there. There's a cave there, there's a cave there. Yeah. There's a cave here. And. Uh, when you see them, uh, the tail sticking out, then they have, uh, sometimes they have uh, fry in there. Oh, okay, so you see, but you can't catch them out of this tank? No. No. Well, I can catch them if I put a trap. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. won't work for the plecos because they'll just go high. Yeah, you can't even see. There's for sure 100 plecos in here. Oh, I bet. But you hardly see them. I want to get some of them on film, actually, because these guys have some really nice patterns. Yeah, I, I'm gonna come back for more, eh? Because uh, there's a few people in Toronto that want these. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm keeping what I'm taking from you for myself. Um, but if you have smaller ones, I can take. I have a friend that wants those, so I brought some extra cash for that. Yeah. And uh, and the discus too. I'm I'm gonna try to figure out uh, if somebody else wants it when you come there's back. There's uh, one sitting that is probably a male so guarding the eggs here. Oh my God, that's a gorgeous fish. See, they don't have this these ones in Toronto. Like ones we have are just straight bands across. It's it's a different well, line. Well, they, they the pattern changes with age. Eh? Oh, uh, sorry, what what did you want to know? I just uh, anything you want to share with. Oh, the... Well, I, I, we're talking about Heiko Blair. I have uh, actually some uh, uh, downstairs in the in, in in the in the in my fish room. I have some. Uh, some photographs of uh, his fish that he had at the time, and right now you look at it that it's that it's not near as nice a fish that they have right now. You get right. way uh, better varieties, uh, 
but you know that was uh, 20 30 years ago that he gave me those things so yeah well anyway maybe we should go downstairs and yes then yes so you can make a little bit more of a movie yes do you, do you have anything you want to say to uh new fish keepers anybody that's getting into the hobby now what gee you're you're, you're blindsided side <laughs> okay we, we can we can i do question. not know like i i find it to be a very relaxing hobby and uh what I find that mo where most people go wrong is they, they buy too small a tank and it's it's a lot, it's just as much work uh, to have uh, a somewhat bigger tank and it's more stable. Mm -hmm. Things cannot go wrong so fast, you know, so uh, that that's my advice for somebody. Don't buy a little tank like that. It's a lot of work and, and if you have a bigger tank, you can put something uh, more interesting in it. And, same amount of work and it's not much more work and uh it's it's a lot uh, the things do not go out of control so fast you see it's more balanced so it's more balanced yeah. yes okay well there's there's a better one that oh my god gorgeous so if you guys want some of these you know who to contact Jan is the discus man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what they say Jan the discus man Jan the discus man <laughs> yeah and that's his show tank in his living room. And yeah. uh, it's amazing. I, I can't believe I'm standing here right now. Uh, looking actually, at this tank. There's, a, there's quite a few of the blue uh, discus in here. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very good at hiding. You won't think so, but there's uh, seven. Quite three, large, too. Full size discus. Yeah. And they, they disappear. <laughs> so. And there's one over there you can see kind oh, of. Oh, the one that is the, the, the ugliest discus I own. <laughs> It's right always up front. <laughs> he's all skinny and scrawny, and <laughs> he gets all the best food, but he still doesn't get any weight, gain any weight. But the ones in the back, those are nice. Yeah, oh, this one right there. There's they one there. they lay uh, eggs here on this uh, on this branch. Okay. Uh, they lay eggs all the time, and they're they're fighting back and forward, you know, for territory. Mm -hmm. Except for the yellow ones. The yellow ones they leave alone, but it's with the other blue ones that they they're in constant uh, competition. I didn't know there were so many fishes hanging out on the ground and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah, if, you, if, you look, that, if you look close enough, you see hundreds of them. I see them on the ground, on the yeah. tree. They're hanging out on the trees like little monkeys. This, is, this is actually like a river. This is actually yeah. like a river. Yeah. I thought the fish, I thought I was just seeing what, what I was seeing was all that was there, but there were yeah. tons more. <laughs> There is quite a quite a few fish in here, and I never buy any. They only sell. <laughs> There's more and more of them. Oh, they just that? keep populating. Oh yeah, they, they, you know, mm. particularly the the, the leopard frog plecos and the the corridors thereby. Mm. They they multiply like crazy. I even have a sneaky suspicion suspicion that the the rummy nosed tetras they. Oh, definitely. Th there's young ones because you see. There's smaller ones in there. This is going on for like years, and I never see. Uh, you see, you see smaller ones but once in yeah, a while. Yeah, I can see some of them. There's some because the and bigger ones you can so tell. I can only surmise that they uh, breed in my tank, but I've never seen them actually. When they're very very small, I think they they, they <laughs> stay hide. hiding yeah. in the in the moss and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then when they get to a certain size, then they come out. Yeah, then they yeah. join the school. Yeah. That's what I think, but I'm not 100% sure. That makes a lot of sense. Because maybe when they're really small, it's dangerous too, because look at all these guys that eat them. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think as long as, as long as they fit in a discus mouth, they yeah. stay hidden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not like it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the, the tank doesn't look its best at the moment because, well... I didn't have very much time. I it, it looks away, amazing. And, uh, so it looks better than most of the tanks I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But believe me, it, it can get a lot. I have a bit of uh, algae growing here and there. That is because I didn't clean the I didn't clean the sump out. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you, you you get a lot of a, a lot of nutrients in, in the water. So this one uh -huh. you said is protecting them. Um, you think he's having some kids in there? He's protecting all of your. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's got his tail like um, sticking out, guarding that nest. You know? What a gorgeous fish! 
Yeah, they're a gorgeous fish. Unfortunately, this is all you get to see about them, you know? It's okay. <laughs> I'm happy you've seen that. That's yeah. all I want to see on them. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. stick in there and get the work. <laughs> so these guys are the same same guys? I mean, one is yeah, yellow, one is blue. It's the same species. It's just a color variation. Is the, okay. I put them in for contrast. Some blue ones, some yellow ones. So, so they still made together even though they're different colors? Yeah, you could possibly uh, uh, crossbreed them. Okay, but do they naturally do it? Mm -hmm. Well, they don't exist in nature. These colors, they're, they're uh, man-made you know, yeah, red colors. I was just uh, wondering if they do, do they come out like one or the other or a mix of both? Yeah, there's there's no reason why they couldn't uh, you, you, why you could uh, a yellow and a blue fish together and have babies from them, you know. Okay, so you haven't actually done it in this tank yet. No. Okay, got it. The, it in all fairness, the blue ones seem to stick to the blue ones, and, and the, the yellow, yellow ones, well, they're the not yellow. really old enough yet to uh, even do to, that uh, stuff. to start breeding. Yeah, yeah, got it. That's why all the blue ones they fight among one another and they leave the yellow ones alone. I guess they didn't see it. they don't see them as competition. I said. Yeah, they're it's probably small. not sexually like mature. Half yet. Their size. Yeah. Yeah. Really, look at it. They are like the half the size. You gonna go downstairs? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end. I uh, hope you guys got something valuable out of it. I found a lot of value just talking to him and I figured you should see the interaction, the entirety of it and uh, most of the things that he had to say just in terms of his tank and, and everything because there's a lot of valuable information that he had that he was uh, sharing with us. So I figured I'm going to add all of that and uh, the one thing I'm pretty sure most of you have noticed at this point was that there was nothing special that he talked about that he was doing to get his play coast to breed which was kind of a cheat, right? Well, the truth is, there was nothing special that he does to get him them to breed. He has good water in the tank. He feeds them a good quality diet. There's a bunch of caves. You can barely see the fish. There's over 100 placos in there. He started with five fish and uh, over a couple of years ago, and there's over 100 L134s in the tank, and they're all over the place. And all he does is harvest them by trapping them, and, and, and then that's it. He just they keep coming back they keep more more just keep coming back so uh that's what i think my main takeaway is moving forward in 2020 i think i'm gonna start doing that with all my playlists because proof of concept right here there's over 30 fry in this tank right now of l340 mega clown playlists i think i got two more clutches they're all different sizes there's definitely three different distinct sizes and the third ones are still in the cave they were just coming out yesterday and i saw them they were tiny so i'm trying to get some uh, b-roll footage of that as well and uh but my point is moving forward what i want to do is to keep a naturalistic method uh, pro, uh, or to apply a more naturalistic method in keeping and breeding my playcos where i'm gonna be doing the water changes i'm gonna be giving them the best food i'm gonna be providing the best environment but aside from that i'm gonna let them do their own thing this is really good that uh, I really got to re reevaluate my own goals in my own playco keeping and breeding endeavors. And one of the main reasons why I got into playco keeping and breeding was that they were so easy to breed and there was less work for the fish keeper. As long as you maintain the tanks and you fed the tanks, you get fried. This is kind of a general rule with playcos. There's not much you need to do. As long as there's no predatory fish in the tank that are going to eat the fry and there's enough food, the fry will grow up and uh, you don't really have to do much more at that point now this is why i got into playcos because i have a very busy schedule but aside from the pandemic that that has locked us in into our houses right now i work 24 7 so i really don't have time to raise fry at a lot of time especially in the summertime so this is one of the best things for me is if my fish are breeding on their own and all i have to do is do the weekly water change look at them once a day for half an hour and feed all the tanks I'm good. I can do that. I can spare an hour a day to take care of my fish tank, fish tanks while I'm going to work full time. So that's one of the main reasons why I got into Playcos. And I think moving forward in 2020, I think that's what I'm going to do with all my Playcos. Even though I am at home, I am not going to take out any eggs or fry unless I have to. I'm going to pull out all the fish that are going to be a potential predator for the fry, and uh, I'm going to let the parent fish breed on the tanks on their own. And so I realized that. Uh, that's something I need to stop doing as well. So when I try to pull out the fry or the eggs, I spook the parents and then they stop spawning for a few weeks. 
these guys have been spawning like clockwork. Every week I've been getting a clutch of eggs or fry now. So like three separate clutches in a month, which is great. I'm really happy about that. And uh, I think moving forward, that's the strategy I'm going to utilize with all my Playcos is uh, I'm going to let them do their thing. And uh, this is what nature has created for us. And it's a perfect situation. It's a perfect plan. Why, why, why change it unless there is an issue and the eggs do get kicked out. And I do have things that I'm going to do to ensure that the eggs don't get kicked out. I have a lot of different things. So I'm going to share all that with you guys in my Playco breeding video. So stay tuned for that. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless.